All right, everybody. Week 13 of the college football season is pretty much under wraps. It is in the books and everything like that. Of course, Hawaii, I think Hawaii is still playing right now, so I have no idea. Um, let's talk college football. Week 13, over. You know, Sarah Fuller, congratulations to Miss Fuller. Uh, first female player in a Power 5, you know, on a Power 5 team. She was the place kicker for the Vanderbilt Commodores. Even though Vanderbilt got blown out, you know, they got absolutely destroyed by Missouri. But, hey, there is something. There is something that's pretty damn good, pretty damn interesting to, to see unfold. Second thing on the agenda here. What about the Pac-12? What in the world's going on in the Pac-12? I'll tell you what's going on. Conference is out of the playoff race. It was very slim in the first place, I think. But Oregon got absolutely shredded on the ground in the foggy, you know, game with Oregon State. And they lose to the and they lose to the Beavers by three points. Not a good look for the Ducks. What about the rest of the Pac-12 though? I'm sure you're clamoring for USC Colorado. Oh wait, that matchup didn't happen. USC had positive COVID tests. Washington State positive COVID tests. Utah was supposed to play um, somebody this week. I think they were supposed to play Arizona State, but Arizona State's been so ravaged by Corona Jan that instead we get Utah, Washington. Washington will inevitably beat Utah. They beat Utah by three points. You know, they had to come back from a 20, 21 to nothing deficit to do that, though. In Colorado, got to schedule a non-conference game with San Diego State. And San Diego State had canceled a conference game themselves. So now... You know, there's a there's another game on the docket. And Colorado, Colorado, excuse me, stays undefeated as well. And you know who that angers? The number 14 BYU Cougars. Oh boy, BYU is looking for somebody to schedule. They're looking for somebody on the docket to get you know a game in. And. It, the pickings are slim. They are looking pretty slim right now. And unless, you know, things change, you know, of course, Corona Chan will inevitably change things in college football like she always has. Uh, BYU could be stuck with, you know, the 10-game schedule that they've been playing instead of an 11-game schedule, you know, with a Pac-12 team or something that could inevitably push their ranking a little higher. But who knows? Speaking of teams, you know, eligible and ineligible and all that good stuff, Ohio State needs to play. They need to play against Michigan State and Michigan in order to qualify for the now move to noon, you know, noon Eastern Big Ten Championship game. Um, originally, this game was going to be at 8 o'clock, you know, on the East Coast, of course. But now that is not happening. It's going to be at noon, which will kind of conflict with a lot of things, unfortunately. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know that Saturday in, that Saturday in December will be stacked. I'll tell you that much right now. The cavalcade of Sports Saturday is going to be stacked, man. But what about these ranked teams, these other ranked teams, ranked games, and stuff like that? Um, no Oklahoma this week. No Miami this week. Obviously, no Ohio State this week. All these teams were scheduled to play, and their games were either canceled due to COVID at, on, on their side, you know, such as Ryan Day getting corona, you know, for Ohio State, along with Oklahoma getting um, COVID, or in the case of Miami, they didn't have COVID, but their opponent did, which is unfortunate. Um, but yeah, let's talk about these Friday games. There was four of them. I've already talked about the first one. Um, but Notre Dame, how are they doing? Well, they're doing pretty good. They're looking in pretty damn good position right now to 
go to the ACC championship game. What a dominant performance by them in the second half against North Carolina. Absolutely great defense by the Fighting Irish. And Ian Book and company are cruising along. 31-17, they beat, you know, the Tar Heels. Iowa, you know, they had to get a fumble to beat Nebraska. But, hey, you know, it, Iowa still won the game. And things are looking interesting now in the Big Ten West. Um, and the reason why is because Northwestern decided to lay an egg against Mel Tucker and the, Mich and the Michigan State Spartans. Just absolutely dreadful performance by Peyton Ramsey and company out there. I mean, Northwestern is no longer among the ranks of the undefeateds. They will drop spots, especially. Um, another team who will also drop spots will be my Texas Longhorns. They may drop out the poll entirely. I don't know. But they gave it all against the Iowa State Cyclones, who are now first in the Big 12 and have clinched a spot in the Big 12 championship game. Who will their opponent be? Will it be Oklahoma State? Will it be Oklahoma? Who knows? Oklahoma State did have some trouble with Texas Tech, though. They only beat them by six points in a high-scoring game, very high-scoring Kyle Trask tossed another three touchdowns against Kentucky. Very easy victory for the Florida Gators. And it looks like the Florida Gators are on a collision course with the Alabama Crimson Tide. Very, very good stuff there. Speaking of clinching berths and whatnot, Coastal Carolina, congratulations. You will be taking on Louisiana in the Sun Belt Championship game. Hopefully both these teams are ranked Texas State got absolutely blown out by the Chanticleers. And Coastal Carolina has another big matchup next week. And we'll talk about that big matchup probably Tuesday night, maybe Wednesday. It depends. Um, but what about the team that could benefit from Ohio State not being able to play? Indiana did not look good. Did not look good against Maryland at all. Despite that Talia threw three interceptions and Scott for um, Indiana, ran in three touchdowns. Michael Penix Jr. not look very good. He injured himself in the game and just looked dreadful on the field, misfiring on a lot of throws. And I don't know what Indiana's approach has been because, you know, last, the week that they played Ohio State, which was the week before this one, you know, they didn't run the ball at all. They got negative one rushing guards. They need to run the ball. They need to get something going on the ground. You're, you have to let you have to let Penix get comfortable in the pocket, and he's not comfortable at all. I don't know what in the world's going to happen to Indiana this week, but we'll find out, you know, later on. Hopefully, speaking of finding out later on, we found out this week that the SEC has moved, you know, some games around. The ACC has also moved some games around and stuff like that. So has the Pac-12 and the Big Ten and the Big Twelve. Everybody's moving games around, of course. And Alabama easily beats Auburn. I mean, it was not close. It was just a bloodbath. And Mac Jones threw five touchdowns, five of them things out there. And, you know, Heisman been candid or not, man. He has been doing great things this season, completely under the radar, I might add, aside from their, aside from their game against Georgia. And aside from the game against Texas a and I really have not watched Alabama this season. I mean, it's just a fact at this point. You know, it's kind of boring to watch Alabama play because of dominant performances like this. And this has been happening for a decade now. So, you know, kind of boring to see them play. But easy performance for Alabama. And they get the next part of their revenge tour next week. Their, their only other loss to LSU. And Ed Ogeron, you know, he, he maybe he benefited from such a talent like Joe Burrow. Because he was all up in um, Finley's face, the freshman quarterback for LSU. He was all up in his face on the sideline when it's really his, his defensive back's fault. You know, 
that just cannot play defense at all, just look dreadful on the field. Texas A&M didn't even need to score 50 or 60 points on LSU to know that LSU's not good. They only scored 20. And A&M's in a good position themselves. They just need some things to happen. You know, along with Cincinnati, they need some things to happen. Along with Florida, too. They need the things. They need, there, there's a lot of things that need to happen. And, you know, Clemson beating up on Pitt was not one of those things that needed to happen. I mean, this game was over. You know Trevor Lawrence was pissed after, after the, you know, not being able to play Florida State. Florida State got their game canceled the day of again against Virginia. So there's that. <laughs> but Clemson, it was 31-3 at the end of the first quarter, I think. Absolutely just great performance by the Tigers. They are looking like a team not to be messed with, especially after, you know, a loss that was very hard, very, very, you know, gladiator, heavyweight fight-like. And the Tigers, they're in prime position themselves to go to the ACC championship game, which won't be, you know, competing with the SEC championship game. It'll be, you know, it'll be a Four, I think, for Eastern, of course. But yeah. So that's, you know, aside from one other thing in Buffalo, how about we go out to Buffalo, New York, you know, for the Buffalo Bulls. Jarek, uh, Jarek Patterson. I almost said Jarek, my bad. <laughs> but Jarek Patterson for the Buffalo Bulls. Oh my goodness gracious. Eight touchdown runs today ties an FBS record we, we getting all the goodies today weren't we we were getting all the goodies maybe I should have turned on some action Buffalo is undefeated I'm thinking they might be one of those teams that could be ranked in the next top 25 by the playoff committee I'm thinking I think they could they might not be though but there's gonna be some teams that are gonna move on out you know especially Auburn who did not belong in the top 25 and you know you know, there's some, there's still some weird pieces like Georgia, of course. You know, Georgia, number nine in the country. Don't know why they're number nine, but hey, JT Daniels looked pretty good against South Carolina. After the first drive, though, I turned that game off. I turned it off, you know, because Georgia went down the field with ease and scored a touchdown. It's not about to sit through that. I'm not about to do that. <laughs> But yeah, what we learned this week is that BYU could continue to get cut by the Pac-12. I mean, I'm just saying that. They're going to, they have to get a game. BYU has to get a game in. Cincinnati, you know, they don't have the room to breathe either. They don't have the room to breathe easy. You know, they might need a game themselves, but I don't know who they'd schedule to if they schedule BYU, people have been saying, hey, BYU Cincinnati, that could be, you know, something of value. But it might hurt both teams in the end. BYU needs a game. They need it desperately. And if they don't get it, they're, they're not going to be sitting pretty. They're not going to be sitting in a bowl game that looks pretty at the end of the season. I don't even know how the bowl season's going to work. There was a bowl game already canceled this week. The Pinstripe Bowl got canceled this week. That's not happening in 2020. Other things that are going on, you know, conferences, you know, are getting their conference championship games locked in. We have the Sun Belt Championship set. The SEC Championship could be set. The ACC Championship could be set. The Big 12 Championship has Iowa State. The Pac-12 is in chaos. Uh, the Big 10 also in chaos. It's not looking pretty. Oh, and speaking of, you know, another team who might be going to the conference championship, little old UTSA who were, you know, UTSA. I'm wearing my school shirt right now, and I have never been so proud of, you know, UTSA right now. I was never really a UNT fan, so UTSA stomping, mud stomping, the UNT Mean Green was something joyful to watch. Good job out there by the Roadrunners. Hopefully you guys will get to see USA Championship to take on Marshall on a Friday night. 
But yeah, week 13 of the college football season has been interesting. It, it gave us a lot of stuff here that I think we can digest over the next few days while we wait for the committee's rankings to come out. And as far as week 14 goes, there may be only about one or two ranked matchups, you know, that, that may catch your eye. Keep an eye on Coastal Carolina. Keep an eye on Indiana. Because they are looking, they're looking like something right now. Yeah, Wisconsin played this week either. I don't think they're ineligible for the Big Ten Championship before. So, well, now that they've had three games lost, you know, due to COVID. So, it could be Indiana, Northwestern, and maybe the move by Fox was, you know, a bit strategic because of the Big Ten. I mean, not the Big Ten, because of the NFL releasing their Saturday games. Uh, but we'll talk about NFL. Oh, boy, we're going to need to talk about the NFL on Tuesday. That is going to be one. They're actually, no, we'll have to talk about it Wednesday, I think, now. But, yeah, crazy stuff has been going on. The season continues to go on in a war of attrition with corona. So with that being said, everybody, I'll see you in the next video in about 30 minutes or so because we got to talk college basketball oh boy we do yes we do have to talk <laughs> yes we do see you then